What's up guys, Ryan from Cortex Labs, livecortex.com, where we talk about performance optimization using nootropics and really any nutraceutical or pharmaceutical available to us, and then energy and hormonal optimization primarily focused on testosterone so that you can go kill it in life because ultimately that's what all of this is about. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm gonna talk about teacrine and I don't know, just like why it's such a boss chemical, why it is a badass nootropic to have around in the mix. You know, if you're someone that wants good brain performance to take it individually or to stack it with things. Uh, I wanna break down mechanisms of action, of course, but like really kind of go into like its action on dopamine receptors, which is something that no one really talks about and I'm not sure folks actually knew about. So I wanna kind of break that down for you, give you some dose ranges, give you some things to stack it with. Theocrine itself, people always ask like, well, isn't, is, so teacrine is theocrine? The answer is yes. And teacrine is the trademarked name of theocrine. Theocrine itself, T-H-E-A-C-R-I-N-E, theocrine, that is the actual chemical that comes from the, you know, the, the kucha leaves, ultimately from the cacao plant. Well, actually, the, the first step before that is it's a uh, theocrine itself comes from a tropical rainforest tree. Like, <laughs> how fucking awesome is this? Called Kapuaku? Kapuaku? That's probably how you say that. <laughs> Kapuaku? Which is a close relative of the cacao plant, which is actually called Theobroma cacao. Interestingly, right? Think Theobromine, the, the stimulant in chocolate. Um, which is made from cacao trees. And also theobromine is a stimulant that is in torque. It's one of the stimulants that's in the torque nootropic stack. So theocrine is just one alkaloid of the cacao tree. It's just one alkaloid. So it's it's one chemical of the cacao tree that exerts all this uh, you know positive effects on brain chemistry. So mechanistically, let's just break this down really quickly. Uh, it is a hard antagonist to the adenosine receptor. When uh, agonists of adenosine hit the adenosine receptors, that, that turns on tiredness. And one of the ways we figured out, you know, with coffee ultimately coming from the, the coffee bean, is that, it, you know, caffeine acts as an antagonist or a blocker of the adenosine receptors. And that blocks the action of tiredness and turns on wakefulness. It's really fucking awesome. Caffeine is amazing. But interestingly, what uh, what teacrine does on the same set of receptors is antagonizes them, but does so in a way which does not create tolerance. Like you can drink coffee and, and then eventually, like, I don't know, you're drinking espressos and then, <laughs> then eventually you're drinking two espressos and then you're drinking an espresso at 2 p.m. or something. With teacrine, you really don't lose efficacy and no tolerance builds, which is really, really awesome. And then secondly, um, as we're gonna get into, there's there's some stimulation of dopamine receptors. Now it's unclear whether it's an agonist of these dopamine receptors, but based on what it's doing and what I'm gonna read from you in the study, it's probably agonizing some dopamine receptors like D1 and D2, which is really, really cool for provoking the motivated energy type of response. Now what tea cream does for people is it, it gives them that motivated energy, right? It just like kind of centers your attention and gives you motivated drive and energy to to execute tasks. You know, whether it's your laptop task, workday task, you're at work, you've got like work to do, you're an entrepreneur and you're a marketer or a hustler or you're doing content, whatever it is, it's like it, it just puts the brain in a place where it's easier to do that. It works pretty awesomely as a pre-workout. So if you take some tea cream before going and working out, you'll probably have a good time. Like you'd be a lot more interested in the workout, a lot better, uh, you'll have a lot better focus going into the workout. You'd be probably more motivated and generally you'll have a better brain energy profile, which is like a pretty necessary requisite, prerequisite for, for working out. The dose range is 50 to 250 milligrams. Like you should always start low and work your way up because then you just kind of know you have room to go up. You see what a low level does for you and you're like, oh, if this is interesting and this makes me feel good and I'm functioning pretty awesomely, maybe I can take it up to 100 milligrams. See, see, see how I fare. You know, if that's awesome and you feel pretty good, maybe I can take it up to 125 milligrams, you know, see how you fare. You'll get up to maybe 175 and then it's too stimulating or 250 <laughs> and then it's too stimulating for you, right? But if you, if you don't start low, you kind of never know what your highest tolerable amount is and you can't really play around with many doses. What it stacks best with, I have found, which is why we built Torque, um, not based on Teocrine, but Teocrine is a heavy hitter in the Torque nootropic stack is Makuna, okay? So other dopamine, you know, Makuna is a dopamine building block and you got Teocrine, which is essentially working on agonizing or activating the dopamine receptors. 
alcar, acetyl L-carnitine, because alcar actually does have some action on the D1 receptor, which is really cool and never gets talked about. Citicoline, again, because of the dopamine thing and the wakefulness promoting elements of citicoline via its elevation of a neurotransmitter called neuroadrenaline. Theobromine, right, because it's basically like one of its cousins, effectively, in terms of uh, antagonizing the adenosine receptors. And I found for potent, potent stimulation, if you've got dual adenosine antagonism or two compounds that are binding to the adenosine receptors and turning on uh, wakefulness, then you got a more profound effect. Caffeine, obviously, TF Green stacks well with caffeine. If you didn't know that, it definitely does, as well as racetam. So that's really something interesting that I found in my experimentation with the compound is that like taking it with a racetam stack or a stack that's primarily centered around a racetam and a choline source, Teocrine both enlivens the sort of stimulation of the stack and seems to maybe make the effect duration window of the stack in general a little longer. That's teocrine. And I just want to say like my anecdotal of it is like I have been taking it for five years or something. I don't know, six years, a, a pretty long time. And this stuff just remarkably, consistently, without fail, reliably makes me function great. I, I, just like 20, 30 minutes later, I know that teocrine is going to make my brain work well. And taking it, it's just, it's, it's wonderful to have something that is so reliable, so consistent and so effective at turning on brain function that you just know it's there and when you're in a pinch or in a bad place or you need to function awesomely, you just take it, you know, and then it's gonna exert its effect on brain chemistry and you're gonna start feeling good and functioning awesomely. And that's how teocrine has always been for me. I've been taking it for many years. I take it in many different situations with many different stacks and in some cases completely by itself and it's that powerful. All right, so let's just kind of go into some studies and really talk about how interesting this compound is. Uh, and I'll first uh, direct your attention to a study called Locomotor Activation by Theocrine, a purine alkaloid structurally similar to caffeine. Involvement of adenosine and dopamine receptors. Here we go. So first of all, I should define locomotion. Um, it's basically patterns of neurological activity that seem to operate in like waves that are relating to complex emotional and behavioral activity in your brain. So basically what the study says that's relevant to us uh, relating to performance is it goes pre-treatment with theocrine significantly attenuated the motor depression induced by adenosine receptor agonists indicating that theocrine is likely acting as an adenosine receptor antagonist. So what they did in this particular type of rat is they gave them adenosine, hardcore adenosine receptor agonists. When you agonize the adenosine receptors, which you know basically your brain does when you're tired, you release adenosine and it agonizes the receptors and that's ultimately what you know, one of the major driving forces of your tiredness at nighttime and throughout the day in some cases even. When you do that, you induce tiredness, right? And you you induce sort of general brain kind of depression, if you will, right? I know that sounds like a terrible word, but in some cases it's fine to kind of shut things down. That's what, what sleep is for. But in this particular case, you know, they had, you know, chemical agonists of the adenosine receptors and then they brought in theocrine and it basically attenuated the brain depression, the motor depression of these adenosine agonists. So at the same time, so here's where it shifts to dopamine, right? At the same time, these rats were hit with dopamine receptor antagonists as well, okay? So they gave them strong dopamine receptor antagonists. This is what the study had to say. Then theocrine was administered and the theocrine actually slowed the negative effects on locomotion that dopamine receptor antagonists had, indicating that part of its stimulatory effects actually have to do with dopamine receptors, which is fucking awesome. Then the study goes on to say, for those of you that are worried about tolerance or wanna confirm or validate the tolerance, and there are other research papers, by the way, about theocrine relative to tolerance on the adenosine receptors. Um, it goes on to say, in addition, theocrine did not induce locomotor sensitization or tolerance, and this was after chronic exposure of the compound. So in, these, in this particular situation, I mean, they gave these rats a pretty hefty amount of theocrine consistently, and it did not cause a tolerance. So how does that translate to you? Well, it translates to you could take teocrine, or theocrine, I mean, it depends on you know whichever brand you get it. Like in the Torque stack, it's teocrine. It's the trademarked name of theocrine, which is just the nutraceutical of, uh, of theocrine. Theocrine is the chemical that's in the actual plant pretty consistently, call it four or five, or if you need to, six days a week, 
and not run into tolerance. I mean, it's just honestly a, a beautiful thing. Like, who wouldn't want that? The, the stuff like that in the nootropic sphere and in the brain performance enhancement sphere are, are just fucking awesome. Now, let, let's talk about taking it with caffeine because, I mean, a lot of you guys drink coffee. I drink coffee. We all drink coffee. And so I don't want to say you have to be careful, but your, your caffeine dose somewhat influences how you're going to take teacrine. So just as an example, like if you're one of those people that's a, a, a somewhat high caffeine quantity intake person throughout the day, meaning you, you know you, you take in 200 to 250 milligrams of caffeine, now we're pushing like espresso levels there, then you know if, if you're gonna take teacrine, as I said, if you haven't taken it before, you wanna start low. So start at 50 milligrams of it and then work your way up. Just be conscious of the fact that you're you're blocking the adenosine receptors and you know and turning on wakefulness and turning down tiredness with caffeine as it stands. But adding teacrine in the mix which doesn't create a tolerance on the receptors and therefore there's no tolerance on that effect just potentiates it, right? It just makes you more awake and powerfully energized. So, you know, folks, I wouldn't say you have to be careful cuz I've never really seen a huge issue with it. But if you're concerned about overstimulation, the potential for anxiety, that's just something to sort of to sort of look out for. Same thing with other stimulants. So like that's it just has to be approached a little carefully or or with some degree of of logic put into your stack. If you're gonna stack teacrine with like well, you, you drink coffee in the morning and then you're maybe gonna add some theobromine, well, you just gotta be cognizant of the doses. Like the the teacrine should probably be dosed. I mean, it can be dosed on the high end, but the theobromine in that case should be dosed kind of moderately. You don't want to be taking like 100 or 150 milligrams of theobromine with 175 milligrams of teacrine. That might be too potently overstimulating and you probably disrupt your sleep that way. When you're stacking teacrine with racetams, it is an incredibly awesome experience. Again, you'll probably extend the effect duration window by mechanisms which I cannot explain to you nor can I understand. I mean, I have some theories on why that happens, but it seems to be that if you got a good racetam stack, but you've got teacrine in it, you add it to it, it extends the time that it's affecting you positively. So where previously the stack lasted like, you know, two and a half hours or something, which, you know, or three hours, which racetam stacks often do, and they kind of stop there. The ultimate robust plethora of effects may in fact uh, last like four hours or four and a half hours because you've got the teacrine in the mix, possibly even more. Sometimes I actually feel like you need brain energy and wakefulness to notice effects from other nootropics like racetams in this case that are affecting memory. Like once you start to get tired, well, it's, it's pretty hard to even get yourself to engage in work and so you're not really gonna notice memory benefits. Whereas if you're awake, <laughs> then you kind of notice that something is positively affecting your memory. And that is what I would say, my friends. Now also, like I guess just as a last additional thing is if all that wasn't really awesome, the the blocking of adenosine receptors in a way that turns on energy and wakefulness in a way that doesn't create a tolerance, uh, likely agonizing dopamine receptors, which is just so fucking awesome, motivating you to do work, getting your brain in a place where it's like, you have that motivated, driven state where it's easier for you to engage in what you have to engage in. But at the same time, the alkaloid is a potent, potent anti-inflammatory compound. I can't say enough good things about teacrine. I've been taking it again for, yeah, I want to say like six years. And it's just like, I, I, I'm still waiting for some, there to be a catch for something to be like wrong or like, you know, some sort of weird side effect. It's like, it's not going to come. But in my brain, I'm like, how is it that this is so good? And I can consistently get energy from it. And it just like makes my brain function. There's, there's really no tolerance that ever comes of it. I can take it consistently without having anything weird happen. And I can stack it with all these things. It's like, I don't know, is it God's gift to us? Like, is it just, did the universe just grant us this awesome alkaloid to make us function awesomely? Like, this is meant to be part of our daily regimen? Probably. So again, as I mentioned in the video, it stacks with macuna and theobromine and alcar and citicoline, and that is the basis for the torque stack. So what we did with torque, I don't, I don't know if you guys actually looked at the ingredients, but I've got 175 milligrams of teacrine in there, which is a pretty high dose. Stacked with a low dose of theobromine. Again, you don't want a hardcore 
antagonize the adenosine receptors with, with dual antagonists, two compounds at once. You want one of them to be medium dosed. In the meantime, we've got Alcar creating or yielding more acetylcholine, optimizing brain cell mitochondria, giving you energy. I mean, all of this is tailored toward energy. This is the logic behind torque, by the way. I mean, you're agonizing the receptor sites both with Alcar, by the way, on the D1 side. Uh, it basically works to upregulate it end with teocrine, actual agonists of the dopamine receptor sites. Then you've got Macuna in the mix, which is giving you the dopamine as well. You got all this dopaminergic action. You got this adenosinergic action, right? Turning on energy, preventing wakefulness. Citicoline is in the stack. So you've got some cholinergic and some dopaminergic and noradrenaline elevation. The stack just turns the brain on. Torque is like a, a, a mundo stack. It's a mother stack. It's a, it's a hardcore stimulant. So not for the faint of heart. Those of you that really just want to turn the brain on in very noticeable ways, go by Torque. That is our new nootropic stack. It is insane, literally blowing up in the nootropic sphere. I just had to place another order because at this pace, we're going to run out of inventory. By Torque, livecortex.com. Livecortex.com is where you can find a bottle of Torque. You can get it subscription or you can get it singularly. You're probably gonna love it, so just do subscription first because that'll get you the product cheaper. And if you don't love it, you can just cancel the subscription and go from there. Thank you so much for being with me. Please subscribe to the channel if you love this video. If you did, hit the box, hit the bell to get notified of all the stuff that I'm putting out because I'm putting out all manner of content, my friends. All manner. It's been great hanging out with you and I will talk to you soon.